Hi, in this Lightboard session we're going to talk about dedicated load balancers and how to pick how many makes sense for your architecture. Now, dedicated load balancers have a number of advantages over the shared load balancer. So, DLB, some of the reasons that we might use dedicated load balancer. We can do our own TLS, our own security setup, so we can put in our own certificate so that you're not using a MuleSoft certificate, for instance. We can use what we call vanity domains. So these are domains that look like they're from you. They're not a .cloudhub.io. Uh, there is, because it's a dedicated device, scalability. So higher level of scalability. And as far as the overall location in your landscape, it's part of your VPC. So useful for keeping traffic within your VPC rather than going out to the public internet. So those are the reasons we may choose a DLB, but how many? So as far as how many, well, if we look at our overall landscape and we've got a VPC. Now VPCs, you may have many of these depending on how many network segments you want to have, but a common scenario might be that you have production and non-production, or maybe you have two equivalent sort of setups like VPC for production, one for staging, and then others for all the other environments. Okay, so DLBs need to live inside a v VPC. So if you have production and non-production, you're going to have, if you want to use a DLB, you're going to have at least one per VPC. So putting a, putting a DLB in, and using it for all the traffic is a possibility, so you may have just a one-to-one -one mapping between VPC and DLB. Remember, DLBs have the ability to balance many apps. You have many apps that you can load balance and set up routing rules for to allow you to have one DLB servicing 10 different apps. So it's not a case of needing one DLB per app. I guess that would be an option, but generally people have a top level vanity domain that they want to have a series of paths underneath and that then redirects to the different downstream APIs. So orders would go one way, customers would go another and so on. So you can have one DLB servicing all of your traffic, but a common thing that people might do is that they have DLB for external external traffic a lot of existing security requirements in organizations are about separating the outside world from the inside world so this might be a level of safety and having different domains having a central point where external traffic so organizations do like to keep things separate so there's external and in this case internal so internal would be internal to the VPC. So if you had another app that is calling, so if you've got app, app two, then using the DLB to load balance between your internal applications would be done through the internal. And as far as external traffic, it's got a nice segmentation from the stuff that we trust internally, the stuff we don't trust. Okay, and that's some of the considerations on how many DLBs is going to match your organization needs. One per VPC, two or more per VPC. You don't need one per application. And the, the advantages over using the shared load balancer.